G'day and welcome back to the channel. Uh, now, just before the review, before the review, I'm down here at the park again this morning because I'm starting to grow quite attached to this little uh, HGLRC Sector 132 quad. Um, I didn't want to it at first, but the more I fly it, the more I enjoy it. It's way out of tune, you'll see in the video, way out of tune. But uh, I just want to get some more hours on it because I'm starting to think it's a really good little quad. So watch the review, see what you think. But I'm going to do a bit of a fly first. The only reason I landed was because it's starting to rain now, it's spitting, and I've got water on the lens, and it's, yeah, it's, um, it's cold, it's not that pleasant. But uh, that was about my third or fourth flight with this quad. I'm getting up to six and a half minutes out of a battery, so that's a 650 milliamp four cell. And I'm going to now take you through the review, remembering I did this several days earlier before I'd had the extra flights and before I started to really fall in love with this thing. But uh, I have to say, before we get to the review, I'm going to summarize before I even get to the review. <laughs> How about that? This is quite a fun little quad for flying around areas like this in the playground where you want something small, light, nimble, not necessarily overly powerful because you don't need the power in a little environment like this. And if you're flying what I, the way I like to fly, which is proximity, you know, close proximity, without the flips, rolls and all the other fancy stuff that the good flies do, you just want a little quad that is nimble and gets through the gaps and just makes you feel confident, even though it's in a really bad state of tune, this thing is not bad, I've got to say. So, um, yeah. I'm going to do some more flying with this. I'll do a follow-up review because I'm going to tune it to make it fly like it should, not like it is. And then uh, you can make your mind up after that. But in the meantime, let's get on with the review. Remembering, this was filmed before I really fell in love with this thing. So, take it as you see it. 
G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. My apologies if you can hear a noise in the background. That is my heater. It's freezing cold. It's winter here in the Southern Hemisphere. So I'm not getting cold for anybody. I'm a softie. I've got the heater on. Anyway, today I'm going to review another Cinequad. And I love Cinequads. Cinequads are a fantastic concept. They're very safe because they have prop guards. They're fun to fly. They're, they're relatively simple to fly. And you can get some fantastic footage out of them. Things you can't, footage you can't get out of something like a, a Mavic or a, or a Phantom 4. And so that they really are a whole new experience in quad flying. I really, really like them. And today I've got one from HGLRC. I don't know why they have a dinosaur, because this is a new aspect of the hobby, not an old one. But um, anyway, this is the quad. Da -da. This is the, oh, let me move the box out of the way. We don't need the box. There we go. This is it. This is the HGLRC and it is, if we look at the box, it is the Sector 132HD and this is the Cadex Vista version. So it's got the Cadex Vista DJI type air unit on there. You can see it in there and over there. There it is lurking inside, which means it's lightweight. And obviously we've got prop guards on here. It's got the traditional flight controller, ESC, there's the camera. It's, it's really, there's not a lot to see. It's a unibody construction. We've got carbon frame. I mean, eh, meh, it's got tiny little motors. It's got the 1106, is it? 1107, I'm not sure. But really, really small motors because there seems to be two schools of thought when it comes to Cinequads. Now, one school of thought says you have great big motors and plenty of load carrying capability and you can run a larger size battery pack. And the other one says we've got tiny, tiny motors to keep the battery consumption down, keep the whole thing as light as possible. Now, uh, the Holy Bro uh, Cine, I can't forget what it was, Cine Pro, and, the, and the Cine Pro I recently reviewed from Gep RC, they tend to be the larger motor um, cine quads which you know will carry a 1300 battery but once you've got them all loaded up they're getting up 300 400 grams they're getting quite heavy um, maybe more than 400 in some cases so not a lot of difference between them and a five inch quad and this is the other end of the spectrum this is the super tiny small motor super lightweight in fact um, let's take a look and see how much this thing weighs let's go to the scales that don't show the blood and here we are this comes in at only 160 grams without a battery throw on a four cell 650 battery which is what they recommend and you are still comfortably under the 250 gram limit. So this is a sub 250, you won't need to register it. If you live in many countries, it makes it a whole different category of fish to something like the, um, the Gip Cine Queen or the Holy Bro Copus Cine Quad. Uh, it is the lightweight category. It's, it's somewhat akin to the uh, Cine Queen 4K from Gip RC. So it is a really nice little lightweight quad. Um, now the problem with these super lightweight quads is if you're going digital, I don't actually see the point because, as I mentioned before, these DJI air units and the, and the Cadex, the camera on here, it's not good enough to get cinema quality footage. It's, it's HD, but it's, it's not good enough for cinema quality. It's 720p in the goggles, and because these don't have a recording card on them with the, or the ability to have a DVR with the Vista unit, you're only going to get 720p, and that's not cinema in anybody's book. So you're going to have to add another camera. And they do provide you with a camera mount here, camera platform for your GoPro or your GoPro session or whatever. But then you're adding some real weight. And then these little motors are going to be really taxed. And so now you've gone from a really lightweight quad to one that's going to be over 250. And it's going to be struggling to carry all that extra camera weight, even if it's just the, the, the 50 or 60 grams of a, of a uh, maybe a Runcam 5. So yeah, it's kind of a, it's a difficult situation. Now this craft is available with the Cadex Tarsia, which makes it very similar to the Gip Cine Queen 4K, because that's allegedly a 4K camera, which we know it isn't. It, 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 I'm pretty sure it upscales from a lower resolution. And again, it's not super cinema quality. It's not the sort of stuff you'd want to watch on your 65 inch 4K television. It will not look 4K, trust me. So this is an in-between product. It's a bit of a, I don't know where to put these products. If, if you just want to have a really good experience flying around with the HD digital system, then hey, these are great and they are safe and they're lightweight. So I don't know that I'd call it a cine quad in this configuration, but they're aware of that because they give you another set of props, slightly larger props that you can use without these prop guards to make it into just a small quad, no longer a cine quad, just a small quad. And I think that's where this machine should really be considered. And if you want to know why I don't think this is really a particularly good cine quad as such, then take a look at this. This is the footage I took this morning from this quad 
in this configuration with these prop guards and these small props and look at the jello. It is, you, you could not use this seriously for anything remotely cinematic. The jello is terrible and I, I had a feeling that this was going to be a jello quad because when I was putting these propellers on, even the screws that hold the propellers on, the heads are slightly eccentric. It, it just doesn't have the, the quality the quality you need to get a smooth non-jello experience. So yeah, I'm sorry, as a Cinequad, certainly it doesn't, doesn't come up to standard. It's not a Cinequad. So what I'm gonna do now though, is I'm gonna take the prop guards off. I'm gonna take these little three bladers off. I'm gonna put on the, the alternative props that they do provide and turn it into just a three inch digital sport quad because I think that's where it will fly a whole lot better. And the, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Now I'm just gonna open the box here, give us a bit of a look inside because we don't unbox things, but we do look at what's in the box. Um, this is the pack you get. These are the bigger props that are to be used without the prop guards. They are, if I look at it, they're three by three by three. So they're quite a bit bigger because the other ones are two and a half, I think. So a lot more prop area. Should make it a perkier quad because you're getting more grip on the air. Um, what also did we get? We got some screws, lots of screws because to change the prop guards, you've got to use different length screws. It's, it's a major job to switch from having prop guards to not having prop guards. That's a bit of a faff, you know, it really, it's not that good. Um, and here are some more screws. I don't know, you get so many damn screws, but there's no instructions. I could, there is an instruction manual online for the 4K version of this, the Tarsier equipped one, but there's no instruction manual yet for the Cadex Vista version. So that's something to consider. This is not a quad for first time users because you're really left out in the dark as to what to do. So you really need to be aware of that. It, it's, it's a bind and fly, but it's not an easy to use bind and fly in that regard. They do give you the Cadex Vista instructions as does everyone else. You get some stickers, you get a couple of battery straps. Um, yep. And you get some camera mounts. As I say, you get a camera mount here for a little ramp you can use for a GoPro session. And there's this other TPU, I don't know. Anyway, there's these, these bits of plastic here for mounting a camera. But as I say, once you start mounting a, a H, external HD recording camera, you're adding the weight significantly. Big load on those little motors. I don't know if they're up to it, um, but we'll, we'll try it and find out. So that's basically what you get in the box. Um, you, the thing is that I find quite annoying. Well, not annoying, but it, put it this way. I would really have liked to have seen two sets of props if you're gonna run without the guards. Why not? These are so cheap and uh, holy bro, they're all doing it. Everyone is saying, we're not gonna give you a spare set of props. Why not? Because it must be so soul destroying for someone who buys one of these, goes out, flies it, breaks a prop, and then they've got to order new props. And they've got to wait for weeks, certainly during current time of crisis. It may take weeks before they get some replacement props. That's not good enough for the sake of a buck, a dollar. Why not turn it into a great experience where you provide a spare set of propellers? So you can have at least two crashes before you end up having to order new ones. Seriously, people, come on, come on. It's not a big thing, but it makes a big difference to the perception of a product. The other thing is lots and lots of little screws you have to change to do things, but they don't even include a suitably sized Allen key or hex wrench, which is kind of a shortcoming. I know uh, the, the um, GEP RC, they include the tools. So why can't, um, HGLRC, it would be so much good. That this is my screwdriver, well, my rod, my driver. This didn't come in the kit. So it's a bit disappointing that they go 80% of the way and they don't really follow through and give you everything you need for the good experience. So as I say, um, I've only flown it with the prop guards on. It is a major, it is a major. There's a lot, a lot of bolts because I'm gonna have to undo every one of those motor bolts. So that's four, that's 16 bolts we have to undo. I've got to replace those with shorter bolts. And then of course I've got to undo the two screws per prop. So there's another eight screws and put in the other props. It's, it's gonna take me a while. I'll do that now. So um, we'll pause the video momentarily and we'll come back and we'll see what it flies like without the shrouds and with the other props on. Okay, so here we go. We have removed the prop guys. Let's see what difference that's made to the weight. And yeah, it's lighter now. In fact, if I throw that battery back on there, what's our total all up flying weight? It is, yeah, 230 grams. So this is gonna be a much lighter quad in its freestyle sport variant rather than the cine quad variant. Of course, uh, these props then are more exposed to being damaged. And of course the motors also get a bit more exposure to damage. And these, remember these tiny little quads that have really, really small shafts in these motors, so they bend very easily or they break if you have an impact. The arm design is quite good though. It does provide a level of protection for the motor bell, but obviously any shock through the prop will be transferred through to the motor. And the smaller the motor, the less resilient they are to these kind of things, but it is very, very light. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to 
take this to the local park on the way home and fly it like I stole it. A sport quad, see if it's any better. Now, I, I still am concerned there may be some jello because as I say, these screws, they just seem to be eccentric. They, they, they wobble as you're putting them in and, and it just, I don't know. I'm it's Really, really cheap screws and that may be the downfall of this thing. If it still has a lot of jello, I will go through my assortment of screws, find some quality screws and see if they improve things. But that'll be in a follow-up video because I'm heading home now, stop off at the park, have a thrash, and then I'll give you my final thoughts after I get back to the studio, have a look at the footage and review it. So, eh, let's go flying. Well, talk about chalk and cheese, this machine is a little beast without those prop guards and with the larger props, it flies really quickly. You can see, I mean, I'm no speed demon, but I'm having a ball here. And there doesn't seem to be any balance induced vibration, but there is, there definitely is some high pitched, high speed vibrations caused by the tune. The tune just isn't quite right. And at certain throttle settings, certain power settings, we're getting a really, really quite noticeable shake. In fact, the frequency of the shake is so high, it shows up on the on the, on the recording here as a blurring of the image. It just shakes so badly. There's no jello, but it blurs the entire image. That's not good. That's a waste of power. That's not a good tune. I think HGLIC needs to address the tune of this quad. I was using a recommended battery, four cell, eight, uh, four cell 650 milliamps. So it should have flown better than it did. But having said that, um, if you spend the time to tune this quad, I think you're gonna love it. I'm loving it. I really enjoyed this flight despite the shakes. Once I get those shakes out of it, this will be right up there with the, the Copus Mini. Perhaps not quite the same performance level, but certainly as much fun level. And so I think what HGLRC need to do is, is to re revisit how they've classified this quad. It is not a cinematic drone. There's no way you'll use this for cinematic footage, but what you'll use this for is having a ball down the local park at less than 250 grams. And I got, a th I had a th over a three minute flight and I still had 50% of a battery left. So you're looking at five minute flights, easy as, and I mean, let's face it, I'm not dawdling around here. I'm honking along, not doing too many flips and rolls and things, but I've got a fair amount of throttle on just seeing how it speeds along and trying to see where those vibrations occurred. So I just, I like this quad for what it really is, which is a fantastic little freestyler yeah, for the local park. Brilliant. And the price I've seen on the website, it looks pretty reasonably priced. So uh, I'll put a link to that website in the description. This was sent to me for review, uh, but I make no money if you buy it. There's no affiliate links. It's entirely up to you, but I don't think you'd be too far upset. It's not a beginner's quad because you do need to be able to work things out for yourself but it is a fun machine, totally fun machine. Anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. Make this all possible. And, and I'll be seeing you later. And here's the rest of the flight. Not much left. Watch and enjoy. Enjoy.